Reality junkie bumping Tamar Braxton's Love and War, and I think that is like the perfect info. Let's turn that down a little bit for us today. All right, it is so much to talk about, and I'm so ready to talk to somebody, and that somebody is going to be you today. Um, I don't even know where to start because so much stuff has been going. I'm not the only person that isn't surprised about anything Apollo is saying. I, <laughs> if my man husband was going away for eight years, I probably wouldn't wait on him either. If he was going away a year, I probably wouldn't wait on him. Because if it was the other way around, wouldn't no man wait on no woman? So with that being said, that doesn't surprise me. When Pedro didn't show up to court, that's when all the smoke went away and we saw the real life fire because if they were like she was trying to make them to be like all in love and their stuff was together and they were just having a bumpy road she would have been there for her man hillary clinton stood behind her husband i know fedra could have stood behind apollo if it was really about what she was making it about um the other thing is what happened i feel like um at the same time, Phaedra taking a leave of absence from um, Housewives is a good idea, too, because I, I'm sure and I'm positive she does not need the camera crew around while all this stuff is going on and they're trying to explain it to their son and they're trying to get things together. They're probably going to, uh, it'll probably be a divorce before he um, goes off to jail. And you just don't need the cameras in your real life business. You know what they say. I show you what I want you to know. And everything else is behind the cameras. So I think that's a good idea. Like, Phaedra's a smart girl. So she's going to fix this and make this look pretty one way or the other. But, mm-mm, girl. Because now he's saying it. He did try to sleep with Kenya. But that was common sense of the conversations that they were having on the show that she was so worked up about. Like, if it was really nothing there, she wouldn't have been reacting the way she was reacting. No shade, no tea, because I wouldn't want my man to be sitting somewhere talking to Kenya, having a private conversation either. But I don't think my reaction would be the same if I didn't think that it was, like, a connection or whatever. So that's it about that. Still speaking on relationships, first we'll start with the tasteless, classless Floyd Mayweather and what he did last week. I love petty. I love petty people. I love pettiness. I'm not even going to tell you a story. I am petty myself. But there's a time and a place and there's a limit to everything. And Floyd has irritated me to no point of return. Like, this is so unnecessary. First of all, Floyd doesn't have to do anything extra to sell a fight because his fight is automatically going to sell and he's going to make the same amount of money if not even more of each fight he ever has so for him to do this shows his true life real life character so that irritated me now let's let's not <laughs> i have something to say to everybody when stuff like this co goes on, I watch enough TV, you watch enough TV to already know how the damage control should go. This is where they go wrong at. I'm sorry, guys. I need some music, and my music just stops on me, so let's get us some music. This is what I don't understand is why am I seeing T.I. and Tiny? To me, they should be somewhere having a seat. I don't want to see you at the BET Awards. I can't think of a time everybody was telling me that Floyd was at one BET award. 
Bull crap. I have not, can't recall the time I saw Floyd at the at the BET Awards. He was at the BET Awards because he wanted to see T.I. and Tiny. But my thing was, I get that T.I. had a performance. I get that y'all was trying to make us believe that it's something. I don't, like, y'all wanted us to believe it was something. But that was a bad, bad, and I repeat, that was a bad call on y'all PR. Y I don't want to see y'all because it was clear to me that Neither one of you guys were happy. So if neither one of you are happy and the body language isn't there, we see that and that's what we're looking for. So I need y'all to have a seat. I need him to come in, have a seat, do his performance, and keep it to moving. All that extra was unnecessary. But then here comes the song. I haven't heard T.I.'s song yet because I'm really not a rap person. I am a T.I. fan, but I'm not like rap rap now that I'm a little bit older. Whatever, whatever. But okay. I did hear T Tiny song who I could not get into like I'm so serious. I couldn't get into the song. I don't know if I was trying to watch the video. It was confused on where was Shekana at? Shaquana, Shekana. When that messy bun was literally messy, like, come on. But then, again, I don't want to see y'all. So y'all went, okay, this is y'all outlet. This is his outlet, for sure. But, oh, now all of a sudden, your background comes back, Tiny, and this is your outlet, too. And you want to write a song and do a song. Blank's there. Because, no. But, okay, now that you got a song, all right, in the video, you're doing interviews. It's just making everything worse. And I'm positive it cannot be helping y'all relationship with you answering questions, Tiny, about anything about Floyd Mayweather. Like, don't ask me shit about another man. End the discussion. Like, I'm not going nowhere because you already know that's what that's going to be. So, Okay. I'm just irritated. I need their PR to do their job and to have them have a seat. Let T.I. make his money and be on tour and blah, blah, blah. But Tiny needs to sit down. Go be concerned about the OMG girls. Your relationship on the, like, out in public and you talking about it, I'm just not feeling that. Like, I like you guys together as a team and as a family, and I do believe that y'all are new Huxables. But y'all making it bad on y'all stuff, and it's just, ugh, ugly to me. Okay, moving right along to an even more messy situation. I do watch Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams is like, I want to say like one of my idols, but she is like one of the people that I admire, of course, because she likes to gossip. It's juicy. She's a woman of a certain age. I adore Wendy Williams. I'm a, I've been a fan since back when her and Charlamagne Char Char the guy was on the radio. So, I do watch the show. I never catch the show when she's extremely messy. Ugh, it always makes me sick. So, okay, I guess she, um, threw shade to Nene Leak. And Nene Leak's another woman. And I, the reason why I like Nene is because she almost never changed who she was and still end up being someone who's also a woman of a certain age and she's still, like, collecting coins. And I'm loud, so of course I always love another loud girl. So, Nene and Wendy Williams, this is Wendy Williams. She said she defaced the $8,000 bag that Nene brought, her $8,000 bag. And she had wrote like little things that they had said on um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. I thought it was cute. Like she doodled on the purse. Doodled. I thought that was cute, me personally. So, Wendy didn't like it. So, Nene didn't like her going on her television show saying anything to her. Now, all this time, I always thought they had a good relationship because Nene has been on Wendy's show a couple of times. So, okay, she writes her this letter and yada, 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 long letter. The next day, she writes another letter calling her, saying that she looks like a man and calling her Wendell Shay. This is my thing. Before I even go any further into the blah, 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 blah. blah. Nene, you have no room to call and say that anyone looks like a man. Because you, like, two lashes short from a drag queen yourself. So, pump your brakes, chill out, have a seat over there. But y'all two grown women, and to go back and forth, or to even be surprised, Nene, that Wendy Williams said something about you. This is her platform. This is how she got to where she is. Like, if you ask anybody, she is the queen of gossip. Not only that, she does what she needs to do to keep the ratings. Two, not all of that is always her. She has a team that she always talks about. And she try to put most of the blame on the team 
So, I mean, it's their job to report this because this is the stuff that I want to know and obviously some type of audience want to know. But then to say, because in the letter it says that she felt like Wendy was throwing shade at her because she's about to come with a talk show. Okay. Nene Lee. Come close. Listen to me. No. You're not messing with Wendy Williams when it comes to a talk show. She has a certain audience that loves her and adores her, and her fans are faithful fans. They never leave. They always say, and she gets more fans. She covers that over 30 group. Some late 20-year-olds might watch her and listen to her, but she has us sold in. With all she doesn't have, we go over <laughs> to NBC for Ellen. Ellen covers everything except for the gossip, and we love and we adore Ellen. So then you got Queen Latifah on C. Um, um, Y'all know where she is. She on BET at night, too. But Queen Latifah also covers that 30-year-old crowd. Now they got Kiki Palmer, who I uh, love, love, love her little show. That Not little show like Shade, but, you know, her show, and it's for the young people, and it caters to their needs and what they like to talk about and what they like to hear. Bethany is also carrying, and she has her little viewers, too. Nene, tell me, where do you fit in and all that? You're not going to take Wendy Williams' spot. Somebody needs to task you. And before they spend too much money on that, they need to uh, cut that. That's just, I don't, uh, not in my personal opinion. I don't think that it's going to work. I just, I don't, I don't even know where they would put you. They Plus, they got the show with Tamar and one of the, um, the sister, sister twins. Y'all know who I'm talking about. They got their show, The Real, that's coming on Fox. There's no place for you. It's the, the That industry is already covered and sewn up. You need to look into something else. Like, who would you have on your show? People from Atlanta? No shade, no tea. Um, I'm so over people talking about Beyonce and Jay-Z splitting up. And because I am, yes, a diehard Beyonce fan, and no, I did not make the On The Run tour, Tears, it's not the reason why I'm saying they're not going to split. I'm just saying that they're not going to split in the discussion, close book. Before I go, because I feel like I over talk anyway. Um, let's talk about Power on Showtime. If you guys do not watch Power, you're five, six episodes late. But if you have on demand, I suggest if you want a good, good, unpredictable show and I love unpredictable I hate to predict something even though I predict what happened on this last episode like I felt like I knew this from episodes ago I hate a show that I can predict this show is the show not to mention the sexiness of the character see how I said character <laughs> it's just a great grown people show it's a summertime show I love summertime shows because they are Filled with so much in each episode because they're trying to make sure that they come back for next summer. 50 Cent outdid himself with this show. This is his show. If you guys are not watching, I suggest the last episode comes on Saturday. It comes on on Saturdays at 10 o'clock. A awful slot showtime. Y'all did him so wrong. But we still watch it, baby. Yes, we do. If you don't watch it, please watch Power. I love, 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 love that show. And that's all I have to talk about today. Um, I'm probably going to come back tomorrow after Love and Hip Hop Atlanta goes off. Even though I'm starting to be over Love and Hip Hop. Oh, wait. Let me touch on that. I got a few more minutes. Um, So, Fifi ended up whooping Jocelyn. And then Deb ended up whooping Jocelyn once she went to Tammy. I'm quite sure you guys heard the story while filming um, the reunion show. So, now Benzino, Benzino comes with a statement saying that Mona Scott... Um, orchestrated it. Does she orchestrates every single thing? And when he says that, that leads me to believe that she'll be the host of this reunion show, which I hate her as a host. And I always say this because she isn't a good host. She has her favorite workers because they she employed these people. She have her favorites and she has the ones that she don't like that much and it shows when she's hosting. I need a host like Andy. I need VH1 to get one host because I love it. Andy is the best host ever when it comes to the reunion shows. Wendy Williams is awful. That, um, 
help me. On um, R&B Divas of Atlanta, I just wanted to jump through the TV and choke her. I was so over her attacking Angie Stone, and that's what she was doing, and I don't like that kind of host. I need a host that watched the show, love the show. It's a few of y'all I don't like, because of course, when watching the show, it's always a villain. So, I don't like the villain, but since I don't have nothing for real against you, villain, let me do my job. That's what type of host I need, and Mona Scott is not that host. So, Benzino, don't be surprised. Don't leave the show either. Because Fifi needs those points. That she orchestrated all of that. She was mad at y'all. was probably sitting there acting like grown people. And that's not what she wanted. Because that's not what, what her ratings are about. She's a messy ass old woman. But she's a business woman. She's a messy ass business woman. Hey, mama. All right. I am Miss Jackson. And this has been Reality Junkie. I hope you guys enjoy. You can like me, <laughs> like Reality Junkie, on Facebook, and we're also on Twitter. Have a great day, guys.